everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I talk about social justice and community issues that may affect people and also charitable things and ways to help people. Today's video is going to be a charitable video of ways to help people. Obviously, as you saw by the title, this video is going to be about Kiva microfinance lending. So if you're not familiar with what Kiva is, it's basically crowdsourcing a loan, a microfinance, a small loan, for people all around the world. This does, yes, include the United States and then a whole bunch of other countries around the world. Microfinance lending is, at, is especially important in lower income areas and in other countries. People who may not otherwise have access to a bank or a loan for, there are so many reasons people may not have access to those things. And it's super important that they have access to this. And actually the first microfinance loan kind of company, I believe was Grameen Bank in India. And the guy who essentially invented that was awarded a Nobel Prize. Studies show that loans are a fantastic way to help people, especially people in poverty, achieve their goals. Because not only does it you know, give them some money so that they can invest in their goals, but it also the loan aspect of it also enables them to kind of feel like they have some like teeth in the game or whatever that phrase is. What's that phrase? Skin in, skin in the game. <laughs> it enables them to feel like they have some skin in the game. And most people, contrary to what popular belief is about people in poverty don't want handouts. Most people want to work and want to earn the things that they have on their own. So by giving them a loan, it's a way for them to feel that they have earned what they have on their own. And honestly, if you think about it, people, at least in the United States, take out loans for everything all of the time. We take out mortgages for houses. We take out car payments. We take out loans for cars we might refinance our house so that we can get some money for home repairs we take out student loans we take out credit cards and then that which is essentially a loan with interest right because you put it on now and then you pay it later we might take out store cards which are basically the same thing as credit cards i mean we take out loans all the time in so often that we might not even realize that we're doing it especially with credit cards so when you scroll through some of these it's kind of like wow why do they need a loan for that well because they don't have money and obviously the microfinance bank has worked with them to try to kind of try to make sure that they will be able to pay it back the payback rate on kiva loans is very very high so it's not really a big worry and honestly to me, I give $25 at a time, and if they're not able to pay it back, it's only $25. And I haven't had anyone not pay it back. So they have an app on your phone that you can download. Just search for Kiva in whatever your download app is. For me, I'm an Android, so it's the Google Play Store. I don't know what it is on Apple, even though I have an iPad as well, so I really should know that, but I'm not sure. App Store, I think it's just an app store, right? So anyway, the website format obviously looks a little bit different than the app format, but on here, you can search, it says, I want to support, you can choose anyone, women, men, groups, individuals, widowed, elderly, single parents, youth, or refugees slash displaced. Then it says living, you can choose anywhere. Africa, Asia, Central America, Eastern Europe, North America, Oceania, South America, or the Middle East. And these are kind of the filters that it offers you. And then the other filter you can choose is what you want the loan to be for. So if you want the loan to be for, the default is to improve their lives, or you could look to give a specific loan for agriculture, arts, clothing, construction, education, entertainment, food, health, housing, manufacturing, personal use, retail, services, transportation, or wholesale. And you can select whatever category you would like to for your loan to go through. It'll tell you how many people fit into that category and then you can just kind of scroll through. It gives you a picture and a little bit of a biography of each person saying their age, what they do for work, and what they plan on doing with the loan. Now I will say I am not a business owner so there is one thing that I have a question about so if you're a business owner like please let me know. So several people are looking to get another loan for like say more seeds so that they can grow something 
grow, say, corn and then resell it in the market and they're looking for a loan again this year to do the same thing. And I don't know, I mean, pre-COVID, that was a thing on this app as well, on the website also. So I don't think it's just necessarily a COVID thing, but I just have questions about like, if they're needing a loan multiple times, does that mean they're not selling it for a high enough price? Or does that, like, what does that mean? I don't know. So I personally generally like to go for loans for people who are trying to start their own business. And sometimes, you know, that is starting their own business, which is why I've read so many of those stories, because that's what I've scrolled through is they're looking to buy more seed. They're looking to buy more feed for some, for some chickens so that they can lay more eggs so that they can have more food to eat themselves. And so they can also sell some eggs at the market. Um, a lot of times people are also looking to buy a bulk of clothes. So when I was in Kenya, I asked my tour guide about this and apparently that is one of the least barriers to entry type of business that you can own. So for example, in the United States, you, we all know that we waste a lot of clothing and a lot of times if it doesn't sell at the Goodwill, it might either get thrown out or it gets packaged and shipped to a poorer country, oftentimes Africa and Asia. And so what those people do is the crappy clothes, unfortunately, they need to burn it and they need to burn it in their own country, which is really crappy of us that we didn't get rid of it for them and they have to burn it and then they have to deal with the fumes and the smoke and everything. But for the clothes that are good, basically, I guess what these, um, I don't know what they're called. It's like the middleman, like the guy who buys the clothes from Goodwill and then sells them to other countries, whatever that's called, um, distributor. I think so basically what the distributor does is they'll just take a, a load of a certain type of clothes, like maybe t-shirts or whatever, and just buy and then just bulk them up, package them up. And then these people in the other countries have to buy a, it's kind of like a bale of clothes and they do have to buy them sight unseen. Unfortunately, they're not able to pick through and decide what they want, but what they would do is they would buy those and then they would resell them like on the side of the street or at a stall or something. And they do have, you know, lax, more lax laws in that sense that they don't have to get like a permit to sell something on a lemonade stand. That is apparently one of the least barriers to entry type of business that you can start for your family. So people will do that, but first you need to come up with a starting capital, right? So you need that however much that, that bale of clothes costs, maybe that like 200 bucks per bale. So maybe you need like $1,000 if you wanna buy five bales. And then you go through, you see what pieces are good, and then you sell them. And so you are going to have to market up a little bit to make a profit off of it. And then you're going to want to put some money back into your business so that you can buy more bales of clothes to resell again at some point. So nobody's going to get rich doing this, but it is a way for them to feel some, it is a way for people to feel some personal responsibility that they are buying a product and selling it. And honestly, if you really think about it, that's all business is restaurants buy food and then they cook it up and they resell it stores buy like a Walmart will buy you know a bunch of clothes from a Chinese factory and then essentially resell it I mean that's a little bit different because they place the order first but I mean so if you look at these discount stores like Ollie's or uh, I don't even know there's an Ocean State job lot store by me but that's very limited to like my geographical area um, maybe like Dollar Tree I think I don't know I think Dollar Tree has some stuff that's made specifically for them, but I also think they have some stuff that they buy and resell. But anyway, so at those stores, they will buy something in bulk, say things that didn't sell from Target or Walmart or, I mean, you also have for clothing like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. They get clothes that didn't sell at another store. They get them and then they resell them in their stores and that's all their business model is. So I don't have a problem with that being somebody's business model. I My only concern with something like that is are they not marking up the price enough um, if they need to get a loan more than once? But anyway, I digress. So I have one guy who was able to pay back his loan literally almost immediately. So I thought it was super cool that he wanted to buy some tools to start a home repair business. Apparently that was a much needed um, skill in the area where he lived because he literally paid back his entire loan within a couple months and he had like two years to pay it back. If you do give a loan, you can go on your portfolio 
I haven't noticed this for everybody, but for two of the five people I gave loans to, to be fair, one of them was just the other day. So for two of the four people I had originally given loans to, I got like these little update messages. So one of them was a man in Tajikistan and he repaid the loan ahead of schedule. Um, he has improved his family's living conditions and is grateful for our kindness. The other one was also a man from Tajikistan who was looking for a loan so that he could purchase school supplies and school uniforms for his grandchildren who live with him to be able to attend school. There's an update on him. His original loan request was for $500. So basically I chipped in $25 and then a bunch of people chipped in some money. You can do 25 all the way probably to the full amount. I don't really know. Um, and so that's in that sense it's crowdsourcing a loan. So far he has paid back $314 of this loan and it gives you a little update on him which says dear lenders he i'm not sure how to say his name used the allocated amount purposefully with your support he bought school uniforms for children for a new school year he and his family are grateful for your trust and understanding so those are the two updates that i got and then the loan that i just recently gave out is a man in el salvador now i am trying to kind of like vary my country a little bit so i did one in kenya and i ended up doing like three in tajikistan <laughs> I don't know the people the photos they just look like so honest and so I don't know I just am drawn to their photos so I did one man in Kenya the so those two other men were in Tajikistan then there's a woman in Tajikistan who she was looking to purchase a an electric sewing machine so she already you know has a small kind of clothing sewing business where she makes clothes and sells them makes school uniforms etc but she's doing it all by hand so she figured that if she had access to an electronic machine she could produce way more um, product and be able to sell more product so a lot of the loans i noticed in tajikistan are for women are actually women looking for a loan to purchase an electronic sewing machine. So that must just be like a really main job for women in that area. And she is repaying back her loan. Um, she has, let's see, her original loan was actually $1,000 for the sewing machine, a Yamada sewing machine. She has so far paid back $411. And then the man in El Salvador, whom I just gave a loan to, I, you know, chipped in $25 of his, I don't know how much the loan was. It was like $600 or something. It was on the lower side of the ones I've contributed to. And it says his, it gives you his little story, which says he did not have a chance to go to school because his parents couldn't afford it. He is married and has two children who are in school and he, he works for a job. He breaks stones. And apparently he's been doing that for eight years. He learned the trade from a friend of his. He does that work from 6 a.m. to noon and then in the afternoons works in agriculture and he will use the loan to buy a new drill that he will use to break stones. He has dreams of having good tools so that his children will be able to study and enjoy professional careers. And to me, I mean, that's just, um, you know, a very noble cause, which is why I chose to donate to him as well. So I've noticed actually that most of the people I donated to, actually four of the five have been men, and I didn't intentionally do that, but it's just that they're, I don't know, I, I mean, I donated to that one woman. I mean, I guess I would want to donate to women, but at the same time, a lot of these men that I'm donating to are, they are the ones looking for loans so that they can help their children. And I think a lot of times in a lot of countries, it's like not okay for women to be the one asking for a loan because the man is supposed to be the one who provides. So I think in certain cases, like the grandfather who is, you know, lives with his wife and grandchildren and stuff, um, I think in certain cases, like he's going to be the one to put the, his name on the loan even though it's you know really helping out everybody so I digress but if you do choose to do Kiva I highly recommend it I think it's a great cause um, please comment down below what success you've had with Kiva if you've done it before if there's any certain type of loans you look to give to that would be great I'd love to hear others experiences remember to obviously leave a comment give this a thumbs up and please click the subscribe button thank you